Can the Indiana Hoosiers finish off the season strong against the Michigan State Spartans? You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions apply. Spartan friends, Spartan family. Also, who's your nation? That's right. we got a little crossover going on over here. Over there, that's our guy, Jacob Goins of Locked on Hoosiers. And hey, over here, it's Matt Sheehan of Locked on Spartans. We're going to talk this basketball game coming up this Sunday. But first, Jacob. Look at both of our football teams making some headlines in the offseason. We are both in similar spots right now with both our football programs undergoing a coaching change. Point blank, we're going to throw you on the hot seat first. Coach Kurt Signetti, he comes over to Bloomington. What is the biggest impact he has made so far in this offseason over there? I think it would be bringing a lot of his experienced guys from James Madison, not okay. just the players, but I think his coaching staff too. I think, I mean, you bring in a lot of familiar guys to him and that that's a, a popular thing. When you see a yeah. new head coach come into a new program, it's like, okay, you're one, I'm going to bring my guys. I'm going to be familiar. I'm going to be comfortable. If we need to make changes, if they can't handle it at the bigger stage, then that's a year two decision. But yeah, tons of experienced players and coaches are coming in. And so, while Hoosier fans may not fully know what they're getting out of Kurt Signetti or his coaching staff or even the players as well, you at least know you've got guys that have played before, right? You're not bringing yeah. in a bunch of random guys here and there and just mixing them together and hope that it works out. You're bringing a formula that worked at one place and you're trying to implement it at a bigger place and you just hope it works out. So, yeah, I think that's been one of the biggest impacts. I think the excitement is there, of course, uh, still getting through basketball season. But uh, mm -hmm. with spring practice right around the corner, you'll have spring game and then the transfer portal window. I mean, it's going to be exciting and, and I think he's going to have to hit it hard. So that'll help generate a lot of excitement for real. Yeah, what is the biggest question mark going into spring ball here that starts any minute now for a lot of programs around the country? Some are already in spring ball, actually. Yeah. But for the Hoosiers, what is the biggest question mark? Is it a position? Is it – I'll, I'll let you take it away. You're, you're the professional here. Right. Well, I mean, there's tons of position battles open. But yeah. to, to kind of keep it on a, on a wider scale, it really is, okay, what's going to be the difference in this coaching staff versus – the previous coaching staff and coaching staffs. I say that in a plural way. Yeah, sure. And Signetti's already talked about, look, we're coming in and doing things the right way. We're prepping for practice. We're practicing the right way. We're, you know, we're just doing all the little things that they weren't doing in the past. And I think that's what Hoosiers fans want. And, and look, with Indiana football, I mean, expectations are, are real, right? I mean, you want yeah. to win. Indiana can compete in the Big Ten. I believe that, and our fans do as well. But – we're also not at the level of Ohio State or Michigan State at mm -hmm. their times and stuff like that. So they just want to see some growth and improvement. And so I think that's the biggest question mark going into spring throughout summer. Are things being done the right way? Is this team developing? Are they being a team? Are they doing all the little things, getting to practice early rather than just on time? Are you doing the extra rep? Are you doing those things that make a football program legit and build it from the ground up the right way. Because look, Indiana football has is, is been as bad as it has maybe ever in the last few years. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of that has been because there's no accountability. There's no pride. There's no, there, there's just none of that happening in the locker room, in the weight room, in the film room, none of that. And I think Kurt Signetti yeah. noticed that from day one. He had a quote the other day. He said, every day since I've been here is like a fourth and one. And it's just, it's been that mentality of, got to get this done, got to have this, got to have this. And so far, I think he's done a good job, but that's the biggest question mark. Not even a position battle right now because there's so many of those that are wide yeah. open. It's, hey, what's going to be different about Kurt Signetti and this staff versus what we've seen in the past? So with that many question marks, this is going to make this next question pretty tough. Five and a half is the win total, not just for your Hoosiers, but also for Ooh. Michigan State. And that game on November 2nd, like that, that could make or break whether it goes over or under for both of our teams. Now, I'm not going to have you list a score projection right now. We'll get into that in a few months when we talk again. That's right. But right now, with that five and a half win total, do you feel strongly one way or another for your Hoosiers over there? I mean, I think the realistic answer would be under 
just okay. because we don't know. I mean, you just yeah. don't know what you're going to get. It's a new look Big Ten, so that's going to be a lot of fun as well. Yeah. Um, we actually talked about Big Ten Media Days on my show the other day about the schedule being released, and just they've expanded it an extra day with all the new coaches and stuff. And right. so, you know, I look at that five-and-a-half win total, and the realistic answer, and to hedge my bet, I'm going to say to go under and hope that they prove me wrong. Um, there's a lot yeah. of time between now and then. What about Michigan State? I mean, are you guys feeling good about five and a half, moving up into that higher, maybe get to a bowl game next year? What's going on? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> two years without a bowl game. Uh, we struggled the last two years, but uh, you right. know what? That's Screw right. it. I'm drinking the Kool-Aid over here, Jacob. Love uh, it. I love it. A big reason is because of the schedule for Michigan State. I'm just going to go through it really quick. The first month is nice. Florida Atlantic at home at Maryland, Prairie View AM. Jacob, me, you, and the first nine listeners of the show could probably hang with Prairie View AM. And then at Boston College. Yes, a road game, but a gettable one, all things considered. Then, then we're going to have to really just try to survive here in the middle yeah. of the schedule. It's home yeah. against Ohio State at Oregon, home against Iowa at Michigan. Yikes. But once you get out of that tunnel, it's versus Indiana at Illinois, and then two home games to end it versus Purdue versus Rutgers. All right. There's a team somewhere in here that probably could have won six games last year with some competent coaching. There is talent on this team. Jonathan Smith, he's brought in some great transfers. His quarterback, his best interior lineman, his pass-catching tight end. There's a lot of reason to be optimistic, not just with the players, not just blind homerism and optimism, but also that schedule's looking nice, too. Like I'm not saying we're going to go to Pasadena, but I'm saying, like, hey, that, that tax slayer bowl down in Jacksonville, that might seem nice. I see seven wins. I see eight wins on a good day when I'm really feeling okay. myself. You okay. can be four beers deep, nine and three, Jacob. So, no, we're, we're, we're feeling right. good. But, hey, yeah. quarterback has to stay healthy, too. So That's, that's right. And, and, you know, with when you're talking about the beginning of that schedule, and Indiana's got some games in there like that, too, you have to win yeah. those games. Like, you yes. have to win them, and you have to win them cleanly. That's something Indiana didn't do last year. Every non-conference game we had was ugly. I mean, it was terrible. Sure. There was no – they were stressful games, Matt. That's not how that's <laughs> supposed to go. No. And so, I mean, that, that's – so those are the things that we're looking for on the football side is, okay, can we go in and beat a team we're supposed to beat and beat them by a heavenly amount and actually – work on some things mm -hmm. and, and kind of improve in games like that. It's tough at times when you win 50 to five, but Indiana wasn't winning by that much. <laughs> they were having yeah. to actually go in and win the game. And that's not what you want early on in non-conference play, especially with the, the Michigans and the Ohio States and all those guys on the schedule down the stretch. Right. That's what has me just really interested in this November 2nd game against you guys is look, I'm not going to compare it to Omaha beach and we're storming Normandy here, but that, that's a tough four game stretch where you're going to take some lumps. It is football after all. And there's yeah. not a fan base that knows injuries more than Michigan state fans, quite frankly, the last few years. So what is the team even going to look like when November rolls around? Will it be, will there be enough depth to hang with a Hoosiers team? Say you guys come in somewhat healthy. So yeah, I know we're looking way ahead in the future here. November yeah. might as well be five years from now, but that that is going to be a game that could set the table for the rest of the season for Michigan State. So it's worth talking about. It's very exciting for both of our fan bases. Is it. Is, is it an overwhelming, like, A-plus hire for you guys as far as the fan base goes for, for Coach Sig? I'd say it's probably an A, A-minus. Okay. I mean, there were, there were a lot of names floating around, and, you know, some – it's crazy that some people, when they were when he was hired, they said, who? But uh, I think that's a, sure. a, a dumb response. Yeah. I think Kurt Signetti <laughs> has made a name for himself. I think he yeah. knows he knows what he's doing. And most people, if you watch college football, you know who Kurt Signetti is. And so I think it was a good hire. My personal, I think it's an A. I think it's a great hire. Am I going to go out and say just home run, best thing next, Nick Saban? Eh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe Probably not. But yeah. it's a good hire. And he's uh, he's already doing the things that he needs to do. He's doing it the right way. And hopefully, you know, you see progress in year one. Got to give a coach some time. We know that. And unfortunately, yep. in today's era of college football, college basketball, whatever it may be, you just don't get a whole lot of time to be successful. So hopefully it works out. And uh, fans are excited about Kurt Signetti here in, in Bloomington. Speaking of being patient, you guys brought Mike Woodson back. That's where we're going to start the next segment with. Yes, we will get into this basketball game. I'm going to grill Jacob about his Hoosiers, and then he's going to grill me about my Spartans over here. But first, I need to talk your ears off about Amazon Fire TV. Folks, Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can just plug right into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes. 
episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend of football or baseball or the college basketball tournament coming up, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. And that includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date with all the latest in the sports world. March Madness, NBA, MLB, you name it, a tons more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos too. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me and Jacob on this. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. All right, before we even get to this game, Jacob, which will be important, don't get us wrong, there's even bigger news here. Yes. Mike Woodson, you guys are bringing him back. Now, look, I, I view Indiana from the very outside looking in. I follow a few accounts on Twitter, but to me, it seems like it's a true dead heat, 50-50 for support for bringing Mike Woodson back. Am I right? Am I reading that, Ron? And also your thoughts on it. 50-50, I don't know. I'm okay. going to be honest uh, from my fans and from locked on Hoosiers and what you see on the boards and on social media. I personally would put it on about 70, 30 of people that didn't want him okay. to come back that were ready. They were ready weeks ago, Matt. They were ready <laughs> weeks ago to say, get him out. It's done. It's over. He can't coach gotcha. anymore. He can't handle it. And the news came out and it, they were reports, right? They were reports that he's coming back and they're just about everywhere you look, but yeah, it had come out because the fan base had really started to stir this conversation up so much so that conversations were being had on the back end. Big yeah. time money people started speaking up. Matt, there was a petition that went around. Okay. People started collecting not good. signatures. <laughs> not good. Okay. Not that's not yeah. a good sign when you've got people getting signatures to make a decision happen. Yeah. So yeah, and, and they made the you know, the reports came out. He'll come back for his fourth year. I think two big reasons on that quickly. A, they owe him over $12 million if they were to get rid of him. And B, I just don't know where else they would go. There's been some names that floated around, and and I think some fans were ready for that. But I also think they wanted to maybe respect Mike Woodson for what he's done in the past. And look, this year didn't go like his plan, but they're hoping, look, you get one more shot. You get one more year. Hit the portal. Go recruit and make this thing a little bit better. And yeah. you're, winning, you're on a three-game winning streak, so maybe he makes something out of the end of the year. But – yeah, I think still the majority of the fan base was ready for, for him to, to be gone, but he'll be back for a fourth year here in Bloomington. $12 million bio combined with, the, I believe, $15.5 million bio for Tom Allen. That that, that would be some checks being cut yeah, by the donors, yeah, the select department. But yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's, when, that's, when the, that's when the donors and the fans really start to get upset is when you're paying people yeah. not to work anymore. That's That's a tough spot to be in, man. Turns out people don't like doing that. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, yeah. they don't. They don't like get, that. Get a grip, millionaires and billionaires. Come yeah, on. Uh, I know. Live a little. I know. I know. Um, what happened this year? Because, uh, look, you guys are 17 and 13 right now. Uh, Torvik has you rated number 85 in the country. What Was this kind of the season you expected to be humming around 500? Or just what, what happened to get to this point of the season right now, Jacob? Well, injuries have been a part okay. of it. I'm not going to say a big part, but I am going to say a part because mm -hmm. there have been very few games that the entire team has been healthy, played, and ready to go. And uh, I'm talking about guys like Xavier Johnson, Malik Renu, Khalil yeah. Ware. Those types of guys have dealt with injuries. Xavier Johnson, more than anybody, have dealt with injuries all year long. And so that's been a part of it, but... This team just took so long to develop. We just it, it took us so long to to mold together, blend together, and play team basketball. And they're finally starting to do that. And the problem was Mike Woodson, I think, for a long time, adjustments weren't being made. It was the same thing every single game, a cookie cutter type of, of play where all right, this is our game plan. This is our strategy. I don't care if it's Michigan. I don't care if it's Ohio State. I don't care if it's Purdue. We're going to play our basketball and hope that it works. And guess what? It wasn't really working. So um, they finally have figured it out. Man, they had 28 assists on 30 made field goals the other night in their last win. Like, talk – I mean, that's – tell me that's not okay. one of the craziest stats you've ever seen. Like, it was that's unbelievable nice. in their win yeah. against Minnesota. So they're finally starting to play a little bit. Three-game winning streak. First time they've done that in conference play. Maybe too little too late, but – 
They're actually having fun playing together. Everybody's healthy uh, other than Anthony Walker, who got banged up in the game against Minnesota. We hope he's okay and going to be available. But yeah, it just, this wasn't the year we wanted with Khalil Ware coming in from Oregon and right. you have Malik Renew. You still have your senior leadership and Xavier Johnson, Trey Galloway. Like this was not the year we expected or wanted, of course, but here down the stretch, some momentum being built, and uh, it is March, man, so you do never know. Yeah. Who does the offense run through? Is it the young front court guys like Khalil Ware, Renu, uh, McBacco? You know, two of those guys are just named our top 10 recruits. Uh, not too shabby. Or is it, you know, the, more of the senior guys? Who Who is the offense running through for, for you guys? I'll tell you who it should be ran through is Khalil okay. Ware. And right. that's when that happens, he drops 26 points like he did last yeah. night. He made all but one shot, and Indiana wins by double digits on the road. It's crazy how that happens, Matt. Yeah, it's crazy what nice. happens when you run through that. So, yeah, I mean, you got Khalil Ware as a seven footer. You've got Malik Renu, who's threatening to be seven foot. So, yeah, the yeah. offense runs through those guys. And and when Trey Galloway, your senior guard, has eleven assists again in a game, like that's perfect offense. And that's where it runs through. It doesn't always do that. This team is one of the worst three point shooting teams in the country. But okay. Last night they shot really well. I think they went like five of eight against Minnesota the other night against Minnesota and. You know, it. they don't shoot a ton, but they'll make some every now and then. And they have finally started to get away from shooting a bunch of threes, and that makes them such a better team. So, yeah, Khalil Ware, absolutely. He is your seven-foot animal. He's projected in the second round of the draft right now. So, yeah, he's who he's the offense runs through, and it should be that way every single game. Just playing at Assembly Hall is hard enough. The fact that it's going to be senior day, too. That, that's going to just, just, just that sentence alone, senior day at assembly hall. That just seems like hell to play in front of. <laughs> so let's talk yeah. about the seniors here. Is it just as simple as Trey Galloway is the top senior on this team? Or is there another senior straw that's also starting to stir the drink over there for the Hoosiers too, that we got to worry about on this afternoon? Well, I think Galloway, I mean, it, Michigan state's going to have to find a way to stop him from being a facilitator. Look, he okay. has the potential to drop 30 on you. He almost did it against Kansas way back in the beginning, but that's not his game right now, and that's okay. not what Indiana needs. He's just a game manager. He's an assist guy, and he's going to facilitate the offense. But you have sixth-year senior in Xavier Johnson, who has battled a ton of injuries this year. I mentioned that earlier, and now he is back in the rotation, but he's not starting, so it's really interesting. Okay. He's not starting. He's coming off the bench, and I like it. I really do like it. It gives us a spark off the bench. He's coming in. He can shoot the ball. He can dribble. He can make the passes when he needs to. And he's actually a pretty good defender. So you've got those guys. And I think Anthony Walker, too, is a big guy who I mentioned did get banged up. Hopefully uh, it was just a knee buckle and nothing too crazy. So, yeah, I mean, Galloway is going to be the highlight. But there's some other guys that will get some love on Sunday afternoon. I'm going to end this with a super broad question. Let's, let's, let's just get deep right now. W what would a win mean? For you guys, or is it just simple as like, eh, not much? Or is there really something to this game on Sunday? I think there's a lot to it, man. I really okay. do. I mean, this would be a four-game winning streak. You'd mm -hmm. have all the momentum going into the Big Ten tournament. Michigan State is one level above Indiana in the current standings going into this game. Yep. Both of us have avoided the bottom four of the, the Big Ten's tournament, the Big Ten standings, so don't have to play on opening night, which is nice to see. Yep. And look, we're playing – to get into the NCAA tournament. I know that's a crazy statement, but we are. We're yeah. not in. We're nowhere near it. But if we go on the run and win it, then, yeah, we'll be in because of the automatic bid. So, no, I think a win would be huge. And I'll say this. I think Indiana is playing their best basketball of the season right now. So a win would continue that momentum. The confidence would be there. And then the Big Ten tournament would be a heck of a lot more fun. And really quick for my Michigan State viewers, uh, this is from Dr. Green and White on Twitter. If Michigan State loses on Sunday, the number eight seed is a lock for this Big Ten tournament. But if they win, they could fall anywhere from five to six in that seed. And just want to throw that little nugget out there for all the Spartans out there. So thank you, Hoosier listeners, for dealing with that for a hot second. We're going to flip the script here. Jacob is going to absolutely grill me about Michigan State, who's on a nice one-game win streak. That's right. Look at us getting hot at the yes. right time. But first, you need to talk your ears off about LinkedIn jobs when you're looking for 
a hire for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are just right for the role. That's why you have to go check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Now, LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals with a B, which makes it one of the best places to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. And LinkedIn does all that while making the process super easy and intuitive. Hiring is so easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy that in fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that as a small business, you are wearing so many hats and you might not even have the time or the resources to hire. So be one of the 2.5 million small businesses that use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions. Got that right. They apply. All right, Jacob. Roast me about my yes. Spartans that are coming in hot as a yes. nine seed or an eight seed, whatever they are in bracketology right now. But yeah, we're we're steaming, man. Yeah, my turn, right? My turn. Yeah. Well, you mentioned it already. They are on a uh, a very hot one game win streak over Northwestern. And uh, no offense, one of the ugliest games I've seen in a long Horrible. time. Horrible. Yeah, that's okay. Though. <laughs> it was a win. That's okay. Hey, we're fine. We're happy. A, it's cool. A win is a win, man. Fifty three forty nine. I got to start with this. I've mentioned this a couple of times on my show. Preseason top four was what this Michigan State team was. Expectations were through the roof, maybe yeah. unwarranted. I think the results may have shown that. There was a lot of hype, a lot of love for this team. Yeah. Where did it go? What was what was the reason Michigan State was so hyped up and then just have fallen flat on their face in terms of the expectations? Yeah, one small part was the recruiting class, the top five recruiting class in the country, Xavier Booker, who plays sparingly. But when he does play lately – he has been a nice jolt to this team. Cohen Carr, he's been fine. Jeremy Fears, who was shot in the leg in December, he's been unable to play the rest of the season. Let me registered another one. But the big reason here is how you ended the season and who you came back with. Tyson Walker, Malik Hall, A.J. Hogarth, Jaden Akins. All right, three of those guys just named are 23 years old. This is a core that is older than the Detroit Pistons right now. And that's not a joke. That's an actual fun fact for you right there. So you go into the season, you hope that they're going to progress, and then all of a sudden, um, I don't see a lot of improvement from A.J. Hogard. Not seen a lot from Jaden Akins. Malik Hall, okay, he's been better. He's gotten healthy. He's been fine for this team. But it's lack of progress from anywhere else. And also the center position, you kind of just went into the season thinking, ah, yeah, they're not great, but you, you can work around it, right? We'll figure it out. No, we did not figure it out. <laughs> no. Brutal. It's Brutal. been a complete abject disaster. If anything, the, the, the center position has gotten worse, too. So uh, that's how we've gotten to where we are right now. May have gotten a little high on our own supply after that nice win over Marquette. Because in that Marquette game in the round of 32 last year, didn't even feel like an upset. Felt yeah. like the better team won. And we're roaring into the offseason, feeling ourselves. And uh, <laughs> now here we are. Well, I mean, there's always going to be high expectations when it's Tom Izzo coaching a yeah. team, right? I mean, that's totally, that's always totally. going to be there. And we're now in his month, Mr. March, of, yeah. of, of Tom Izzo. And so, yeah, I mean, you look down this non-conference schedule. You played Duke. You played Arizona. You played Baylor and beat Baylor pretty bad. And that where the beginning of the year was, was not fun. Losing to uh, – James Madison to start the year. I don't know if you guys remember that, but um, uh, but then yeah, a little. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then you started 0-2 in Big Ten play. Everything's going south. Everything's crumbling. And then you turn around and you smack that Baylor team. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Here's the Michigan State that we thought existed. And then it's just been up and down through, through non-conference play. You mentioned it already, but where does Michigan State go for scoring outside of Tyson Walker, who, yeah, he scores 18 points a game. Where do they go? Right. Even if he gets his, how does Michigan State score the basketball? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to start with just talking about Tyson Walker because that's been an issue lately. In the last six games, there's just one game where he shot 40% or better. He's been hampered with a groin injury, and I have a feeling that's not the only injury he has. I, the, the guy is oh. six feet, roughly 90 pounds. The guy gets thrown around every single game, but he's tough. He'll never admit that he's hurt. Tom Izzo has sat him during practices forcefully which is something he never does, just to try to get him somewhat healthy. So that's been a thing. Yes, he is scoring. Like, I think last night he scored 18 points. Took him, I think, 19 or 21 shots to get there. Took him a while. So where do they go for scoring? Malik Hall is your best presence in the post. And he's had to be. Like you just said, 53 to 49. 
ugly offensive game, and it's some disturbing trends that we are seeing right now because Jaden Akins, ever since halftime of the Penn State game a little bit ago, 4 of 22 from 3. Yeah, that, that's your three-point threat. Also, mm. same with Tyson Walker. Neither of those guys are shooting the three that well lately. Right. So it's getting into a scary season where we've had to rely on our backup point guard, Trey Holloman, to fill the bucket, which he can do. It's just not as consistent. So where do the points come from, Jacob? Malik Hall, maybe? <laughs> he said maybe question mark M- okay M- Malik Malik Hall most of the time but yeah. uh yeah it's yeah. It, it has been a downward trajectory of the offense but maybe we can I don't know simply just find an offense in assembly hall surely that's easy right we, we can do that no problem yeah in March the, I, I always yeah, say yeah, it's fine. the best time to fix problems are in the month of March it's right great that's, yeah, yeah, it's like football where it's November. It's like, oh, we should probably fix this problem that we've had for the last three months, you know? Yeah, so they've they just been really bad late trends. I, I could excuse it like two, yeah. three games. But now we're going on five or six games for two of our top offensive threats in Tyson Walker and Jaden Akins. And it, it's scary season for me over here, and I think a lot of fans too, realizing that, huh, is this a blip or is this actually a trend? Yeah. Huh. Huh. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, I mean, we dealt with that over here, and and you know, it was it was up and down. It was win a game, lose a game, win a game, lose three, win a game, lose two. Like it was yeah. just, it just wasn't. There was no flow until as of late. Now we're on a three game winning streak. But you were mm-hmm. asking me about our offense and who it runs through, and I said Khalil Ware and Malik Renu, and I said Khalil Ware seven foot because he is, and Malik Renu is is pushing seven foot. And I've noticed Michigan State the size is just not there. So as we talk mm-hmm. about the game coming up this weekend. What in the world is Michigan State going to do with those two guys who, when they play their best, can put up 40 combined points? Probably give up 40 combined points. That's what they're going to do. Look, if, if prediction. You, uh, I, yeah, thank you, right? No, <laughs> it's uh, – I mean, if there is a somewhat competent front court player playing against Michigan State, go ahead, mosey on over to FanDuel, America's number one sports book, and, go, and just bet, bet their overs. There's more there times go. than not. It's nice going to go plug. Ahead Nice plug, man. You like that? I'm a company man. Yeah, that's Mr. Right. Lockdown that's is right. going to sweeten his next check. Uh, Love, it. That's, Love it. That's right. But no, it that that's what scares me about this game is that, huh, I see some real competent, if not outright talented, big men coming up here. Michigan State does not do well against those kind of players. It's not good. Whether you're true freshman Owen Freeman from Iowa or you're just an old experienced guy, uh, which we've seen up and down throughout this year. That frightens me. Now, with that said, Michigan State is able to shut the valve off on the wing. Like th- Their perimeter defense has been really good this year. Guard on guard play, I don't worry about that defense most nights. Okay, but it's, yeah, it's going to have to be, okay, you're going to suffer with the front court, I think. You just have to shut down the options on the perimeter. So that's going to be the story of the game here is how well will this perimeter defense be for Michigan State? Can you slow the Hoosier guards down because – 40 points just seems inevitable from the front court. Dare I say 50? God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Okay. No matter what the result is this weekend, and no matter how the post – well, I guess it kind of matters how the postseason plays out, but yeah. <laughs> are the conversations being had – are they being had right now, Matt, about the future of who the next head coach maybe should be in Michigan State or the future of Mr. March himself? I mean, I – there's got to be somebody out there yeah. that's thinking, okay, it's time to move on. Haven't won a national championship since a long time. <laughs> and mm-hmm. so I, I'm legitimately asking people there in, in Spartyville, are they having those conversations? Some vocal minority right now is what I will call. There are some say, oh, you need to fire Izzo, which first of all, delusional. That'll never happen. And there are some people that are nicer about it. I mean, like, hey, someone needs to have a conversation with him, force him into retirement. Yeah, I'll also have a hard time seeing that happen. But I think by and large, whether it's people have accepted the reality that well, Tom Izzo's a stubborn guy and he's going to stick around and he is going to go out on his own terms, whether that's the reason for the majority, I think the majority want to see Izzo stay. Like me, for example, over here, during that nice little three-game skid where you lost two home games as 10-point favorites, I was very upset at old Tom, a man who I love more than most family members. Like this guy is giving right. me some of my best memories of all time, but still furious at him. Still want to keep him around, though. I'm going to give the Hall of Fame coach the benefit of the doubt to really fix things this offseason because, like, he has no choice. Like, there are going to be major changes coming up this offseason because there's going to be some attrition, whether it's guys graduating, whether it's players that you just have to say goodbye to. I will give him the benefit of the doubt of giving one more offseason to really get this train back rolling because it isn't just this season, Jacob. It's the last four seasons have just been wallowed in mediocrity, being out of the Big Ten chase by the time February even rolls around. And that's not the Michigan State basketball that I'm comfortable with, that many of our fans are comfortable with. 
But man, he's given so much to this school, and it's just the hard reality that no, he he ain't he ain't gonna get pushed up by anyone. Is is maybe why I'm not saying fire him. And right. Just kind of realizing that yeah, okay, he's gonna have another off season here. Yeah, well, I mean, I get it, man. I totally yeah. get it. The only thing I think though is the trend of older school coaches in college totally. athletics, right? Totally. With everything happening, NIL, transfer portal, all that type of stuff. You've yeah. seen the Coach K's and the Roy Williams and the Bayheims. You've seen those yeah. guys. And I mean, you've seen them. They're out. They've gone. The Jay Wright to Villanova. They're gone. They don't want to deal yeah. with it anymore. I wonder if that breaking point eventually does come for Tom Izzo. But you mentioned he's a stubborn guy and maybe he doesn't care yeah. and he'll deal with it. So I don't know. They would be dumb to fire Tom Izzo. I don't think that's happening. They won't. I, I yeah. think it's on his terms, too. I really do. Yeah, there was one quote that really fired us up in the offseason. It's because, obviously, you know, times are changing in basketball. And he said, I, I want to beat the system. And in the offseason, we're like, hell yeah, Tom. Woo! Love it. Top five team. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And now here we are thinking, huh, a somewhat competent center probably adds five or six wins to the season. Yep. Probably should have used the system there, Tom. So, yeah, yeah, we were again. We were feeling ourselves in the off season, but uh, of now it's the hard reality of uh oh, we might be like a nine seed here. <laughs> March mm-hmm. Madness, not really what we were hoping. Yeah, um, that, I, I would hate to be a nine seed in the NCAA tournament this year. Yeah, that would right? be that'd be yeah. terrible, man. I couldn't <laughs> imagine what that feels like. Yeah, but it's like uh, maybe, maybe that system just might help things. I don't know. Yeah, so hopefully he bit. learns that this off season. Is it wishful thinking? Maybe, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. There you go. Well, hey, final predictions really quick before we get out of here. The game on Sunday. What you got? 62-60 Hoosiers, which honestly, wow. this is weird. This is weird. It won't be the hardest loss in the world because I don't want to be on that 8-9 seed line. I know I'm talking like a loser right now, Whoa. but if the loss moves us to the 10 seed line, what what difference is that? Playing a 2 seed in the second round over a 1 seed is better. So, how about that to leave you? Okay. Just some delusional crazy talk over here from Mr. Locked on Spartans, but what's your prediction, I love it. Uh, prediction over there? I'm going to say I'm going to go Indiana 72, Michigan State 68. It's going to be a game at Assembly Hall. That's kind of, yeah, I, I a, no no matter how much Indiana's struggling this year, I have a, just a hard time seeing a Michigan State win at Assembly Hall any year. So. Others have done it. I mean, Assembly Hall yeah. is not. I mean, it, it's Assembly Hall is still Assembly Hall, but the team playing in Assembly Hall is not yeah. what it normally is. But again, three game win streak. So no problem. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm buying into it, man. I'm I'm drinking the Kool Aid as they say, and hoping that we just go on a run and somehow find our well find our way in the tournament, and then uh, we'll have a lot more fun this month. There we go. Well, folks, you know that both of us will be back. Jacob, he's going to recap the game on Sunday. I'm going to recap the game Sunday, too. And we're also going to talk a little bit about football recruiting over here at Locked on Spartans. But until then, hey, everyone, enjoy your weekend.